Greetings, all you cool cats and kittens. It's time for Tune Talk. And my name is Toki. Oh, Toki, go back to eating your own regurgitants. On today's program, Calico Billy in the Low Ground. Hey, I'm Sneezy Calico. Can I be in this episode? No wonder the view count is lower than Toki's IQ. I think that's quite enough of all this anthropomorphic claptrap. Let's get on with the show. And now, here's your hosts, Howard and Trisha. Hi everyone and welcome to Toon Talk. In this episode we will be discussing the Calico Billy in the Low Ground. One of my favorite tunes. Billy in the Low Ground is a common tune that can be traced back to the mid-18th century with the title referencing William of Orange and the Battle of the Boing. However, the calico version of Billy in the Low Ground seems to have gurgled up relatively recently from the soggy depths of festival mud pits. One band that has recorded the calico Billy in the Low Ground is the Onlys. The Onlys are an extraordinarily talented group of young musicians who have, for the most part, been playing together since a very young age. The quartet consists of multi-instrumentalist Riley Cal Cupcake, fiddler Samwise Bramengi, singer and guitarist Livian Viva, and the quiet only Leon Shamwow. We have the Onlys on the line for a quick interview. Riley, so good to have you on the show. It's lovely to be here on Toon Talk. Riley, you were quoted as saying that the Onlys are bigger than Jesus. Is this true? I was misquoted. I said we were bigger than Cheez-Its. Sure, Cheez-Its are a tasty nighttime snack, but they can't play the banjo now, can they? Let's give a listen to the Onlys playing a bit of Calico Billy in the Low Ground. Oh my. The Calico Billy in the Low Ground with the violin tuned A E A C sharp or calico tuning is a singular piece of music in the canon of modern traditional American fiddling, in that the roots of the tune are obscured by myth and perhaps even anomalies in the fabric of space time itself. Washington fiddler Sally Jablonski claims to have learned the tune from Greg Canope. She then taught the tune to some fellow named Josh Rabies or something, who recorded it on Jason and Ferris Romero's 2010 album, Back Up and Push. Amy Hoffer learned it from that album and was playing it at a festival when Greg Canote heard it from her and said he had to learn that tune. Thus, the tune seems to have entered a sort of wormhole and become looped in the gravitational pull of Northwest fiddling. This appears to be a dead end, with the tune itself circling the fabric of space-time like a ship caught in the whirling waters of a maelstrom. But wait, there's more. Fiddler Kathy Mason tells a different story. A story in which a fiddling friend of hers by the name of George Reynolds, whom I have never met but I am sure is a perfectly wonderful chap, learned the tune in a workshop in the 1990s given by the late John Hartford, wherein he claimed to have moved the tune from the standardized key of C into the AEA C-sharp tuning. And so, perhaps, we finally have something akin to a resolution to one of our tune mysteries here on Tune Talk. Or, perhaps the tune was generated out of a disruption in the very fabric of our fragile existence, and will continue to circle ever wider on its journey through the cosmos. Once again, we leave you with only more questions... Thanks for tuning in to Tune Talk. We hope you tune in again next time, where the talk continues to be relatively 
tuneful. Okay, um, that's it. That, but that that is but, but. as always we appreciate your support uh tell your friends about patreon because we're not telling anyone <laughs>